Hello students, a very warm welcome. Today we will talk about managerial economics. The topics we are going to discuss is what is economics, micro macro, finally what is managerial economics, the scope, how or whether or not it is at all useful for a manager's this different function and what role a managerial economist play in the managerial management team and this is very important and will be discussed towards the end of the tutorial. So let's get started. So we will actually start by discussing what do we understand by the term economics itself. Now simply it is that you have limited resources and you have a lot of wants. So with the limited resources or scarce resources, you need to satisfy lots of wants. That means you want to maximize your utility. This is your objective function and economics deals with this basic question. Okay. That means maximization of utility or welfare with the scarce resources. So you make the scarce resources use them in such a way that your utility or satisfaction is maximized. So the question arises how and firm will maximize. We have talked about individual how it will maximize its utility or welfare. So a firm to, is said to be in equilibrium or to attain equilibrium if at all he can produce that level of output that will maximize his profit and in terms of the society as a whole the society will reach equilibrium or will attain equilibrium when it can maximize the welfare of all the people's that means all the goals will be achieved. Here we have goals of businessmen. There are different goals discussed by different economist authors such as William, Herbert talk, Simon talked about satisfying behavior theory while Rose talk, talked about size or growth maximization etc. Next, we turn on to the distinction between micro and macroeconomics. Micro by the very word means small, minor and macro means large. Okay. So, micro is the study involving individual behavior or individual units while macro is the study at the aggregate level. That means it is economic wide. So, for example, determination of national income, GDP, output level is done for the on an aggregate level. So it is macroeconomic concept. Why determination of sales of a particular firm is an example or it will come under the purview of microeconomics. Now next we will discuss the topic itself that is managerial economics. Now there have been di different economists that have been that have provided different definitions about managerial economics. The simplest one is that it is the economic that is applied in decision making. How you will apply economics the different concept principles in decision making actually tells us or describes managerial economics. So, from the tradition we get the theory. From science we get the tools and techniques. Amalgamation of both is nothing but managerial economics. And managerial economics actually uses both theory as well as tools to solve different problems related to business. So, to make decisions with regard to demand, input-output decision, forecasting demand regarding price, regarding profit, investment, all these come under the 
core content of managerial economics. Next, we will look at different theoretical foundation for demand analysis. Now, first we will look at the cardinal utility. First, we need to talk about the law of diminishing marginal utility. It says uh, the utility derived from the co consumption of same good, that law or law of diminishing marginal utility states that as more and more good as more and more units of the same good is consumed, the utility derived from it decreases. Then next is the law of equally marginal principle. This principle states that consumer will choose a combination of goods that will maximize his or her total utility. And consumer equilibrium is the point where the demand and the supply forces intersect. Next, we talk about the ordinal analysis. Under ordinal analysis comes the indifference curve and the budget line. And tangency is achieved or equilibrium is achieved where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. Okay. Along with that, we also, the theoretical foundation for demand analysis also include the angel curve, the income consumption curve, or the price consumption curve, etc. Now, law of demand says that other factors remaining constant if the price of the good increases according to the law of demand, the quantity demanded for the goods falls. So, there is an inverse relationship, and that's why the demand curve slopes downward and we get an inverse relationship. And the functional form of demand is this, that quantity demand becomes a function of prices, own prices, price of other goods, income, taste preference, etc. We have certain exceptions to the law of demand. These are called Giffen paradox, Veblen effect, Snob effect, etc. Next, we turn on to the word elasticity. Now, we know Ceteris paribus, that if the price of a commodity increases, the quantity demand for that good will fall. But by how much? That means the degree of responsiveness is captured by the concept of elasticity. Okay? It is given by this formula and we have not price elasticity, income elasticity, as well as cross price elasticity. Now, price elasticity can take five values. These are, it can be equal to infinity, zero, greater than one, less than one, and equal to one. And given the values, the price, the demand curve have different name. For example, if the value of price elasticity is equal to one, the demand curve is said to be called unit elastic. Now we come to the relationship between total revenue and elasticity. This small box or these three lines summarizes the relationship where when price falls, total revenue increases when demand is elastic. And under different situation, the relationship between price and total revenue changes. Now, there are two methods that can be used for measuring elasticity. These are point elasticity and arc elasticity. Now, there are many determinants of elasticity. These are number and closeness of substitutes, commodity importance in buyer's budget. If it is more important, then it has different elasticity and vice versa. The number of uses, that means multiple use, if the product is of multiple use, like electricity. And all, we have already discussed there are some other elasticity concepts. Not only price, it is income elasticity, cross elasticity, cross price elasticity, etc. Next, we move on to the theory of production or simply I'll say supply. Supply means raw materials, that is the input, labor, raw materials, capital, organization 
and the output. So it is the input output relationship. Now we need so the different concepts with regard to one variable input is law of variable proportion. Okay. The other fact the other concepts related to production function with two variable is iso cost, iso quants, optimum combination of inputs, etc. Now the production function with all variable inputs under this heading we have returns to scale that is whether it is increasing returns to scale that means with less input you can produce more constant returns to scale that means with same amount of input you are producing the same quantity of output and decreasing returns to scale means that means with more inputs you are producing less units of the output. A term causally linked to production is cost because when a producer decides how much to produce he has to analyze carefully the cost figures. Now there are many costs, different types of costs are there, opportunity, implicit, explicit, there are fixed cost, variable cost, okay, and these have further division like av in average term, marginal terms, etc. Now the cost function is divided into two parts, short run and long run. In the short run we find the major difference between the two functions are that, is that in the short run, some factors are variable while some factors are not. That means they are fixed. But in the long run, all the factors become variable in nature. Next, we move on to the function of managerial economics. Now, we have seen that the basic function is the perfect amalgamation between the theory and the tools so that you get optimal solution to various business problems. Now, so you, the basic thing is that you need to take decision. Now, decision making involves a lot of steps. First, you need to identify the source of problem. You need to collect data, evaluation. You have to select best alternatives. That means if this doesn't work, you have to switch. So you need to prepare for yourself for that even. You have to implement the decision and then you have to follow your action. That means you have to tap it. Now what are the actually functions, specific functions performed by managerial economists? They actually see comment on the sales forecasting. They are the one doing the market research. They are the one that solve the pricing problem of the industry look at how to increase the investment talk about the security provide how to expand the business that means advice on trade environmental forecasting and many more now let us see what is mr williams view with regard to manage role of managerial economist in the management team so he thinks that he by his virtue of, he means that the managerial economist, by the virtue of his study of economic analysis primarily, he can be helpful to the members of management group. How? Because he acquires a very rich body of tools and techniques. Techniques come from theory, tools coming from science, which help him to deal with the problems of the firm more rigorously. This is what we have been discussing so long as far as probing in a far deeper manner. So these are the views of Professor William. So having this is all about what do we understand by managerial economics and the role of managerial economist. So we just I just want to tell you thank you so much for watching.